Hey everyone, I got a new camera recently. It's the Sony FS700, and I'm gonna list a couple of the things that I don't like about this camera, as well as some things that I think are really great and why I decided to pick it up in the first place. So if that sounds really good and you enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will be sure to continue making videos like this. All right, let's get into it. When this camera came out in 2012, it had a starting price of $8,000. But today, you can buy one depending on the condition and depending on the accessories that come with it. You can find one of these bad boys for about $2,000, maybe $1,000 if you're really lucky. I paid $1,500 Canadian for my camera and that's a lot of money. It's a little bit of a dinosaur. I mean, it's huge. It doesn't shoot 4K, it only shoots 1080p internally. You don't get 10-bit colors. You don't have that same flexibility that a lot of modern cameras have. This thing is huge and clunky. So yeah, you know what? For around $1,500, there's a lot of cameras that you can find that have a lot of specs that are a lot sexier than what we have right here. Canon, Sony, and Blackmagic, and all these other companies are releasing cameras left and right that shoot, you know, 6K and, and 8K and 12K. But regardless of all those other cameras and all those other features, this camera still has a place in today's market. Let's start off with talking about something that a lot of people would consider a, a really big handicap with this particular type of camera, and that would be the size and form factor. For me, I shoot a lot of my videos handheld, and this camera is heavy and it's a little bit uncomfortable, don't get me wrong, but that's actually one of the things that is really beneficial to a camera like this. When you're holding something that is this heavy and this large, gravity is really helping you to be able to stay nice and stable. You're dealing with a lot more of a cinematic handheld look rather than a lot of these micro jitters that you get from dealing with a lot of these other smaller mirrorless and DSLR bodies. And I actually find it really comfortable to work with as well. For me, I find that having a camera that balances really nicely in my hands is really important. And I use a lot of really heavy lenses. It's not leaning one way or the other. It's resting really comfortably in the middle. This camera is really nicely balanced with most of my lenses. Yes, sometimes when not dealing with these huge zoom lenses and I'm dealing with more these smaller prime lenses, it's a little bit weird because you have all of this space in the back and nothing in the front. But for me, I don't use a lot of smaller lenses. Most of my lenses are lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens that I'm shooting on right now. Uh, I use the Tamron lens. And even when I use a smaller lens, the camera doesn't feel too out of place. It doesn't feel that imbalanced. It feels okay. And I would much rather have a camera that is too back heavy than too front heavy. Because if it's too front heavy, it, it feels like it's falling out of my hands and it feels like it's going away from me. But when I'm dealing with a camera that is too back heavy, it's falling into my chest and I can actually stabilize it properly with my body. I also really love all of the features that are built into this camera. We have XLR microphone jacks. We have built-in ND filters. We have all these different buttons, dials, and switches to really customize and really nitpick our image to being exactly how we want it to be. The menu system is atrocious. Now, after a while, you do get used to it, so it's not a deal breaker for me, but it does take a really long time to figure out. It's not the most intuitive. I just find that it really slows down the workflow, and I often miss shots because I'm looking for something in the menu system rather than actually taking the time to actually shoot a video the way that I want to. It's really frustrating working with manual lenses and this camera because whenever you push a button that is specifically dedicated to uh, an automatic lens and you're using a manual lens, a lens that does not have any electronic components inside of it, then it will send a message and a little window will pop up saying that you can't use that function. Personally, I hate this window popping up all the time. It interrupts my workflow and it's uh, just really 
frustrating. I often bump these buttons or turn a switch by accident, and I would rather those switches and I would rather have those buttons do nothing rather than telling me, hey, this button does nothing just because I pushed a button, sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose because I'm an idiot. But I don't want the camera reminding me that I'm an idiot. It slows me down and it's really frustrating. Now you might also be asking yourself, hey, if you're dealing with a camera that is this large, um, aren't you gonna find it really annoying to travel with? And yes, that might be the case, but for one thing, I don't travel that much. I have a nice studio, so a lot of my gear just lives here, so I'm not packing it away and, and moving about as much. But also, because it has all of these features that are built into the camera itself, I don't have to carry as many pieces of individual gear as I normally would have to, such as XLR inputs. I now no longer have to carry a, an external recorder. The fact that it has a full-size HDMI port means I don't have to carry around adapters. It also has SDI, which is a much more solid connection. You know, I'm always losing ND filters, and then I have to buy new ones, and the fact that it's all built into this camera is a lifesaver for me. It's just a little bit easier to be run and gun when everything that you need is built right into the camera system itself. So while it might be larger and heavier, I'm no longer leaving behind any individual pieces because if I leave this behind, um, I'm an idiot. Something else that's really important to me is that this is a dedicated video camera. And you know what, that looks really impressive to my clients but also it's really just practical for me. There's all kinds of features in mirrorless cameras and DSLRs that they hold back from us and it's really annoying, but basically they want us to spend money on cameras like this. And if you don't have the money to buy, you know, a Sony FX6 and C200, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, Mary Alexa, Red Epic, or some Mini Pro, Panasonic EVA, basically if you're in my boat and you can deal with things like not having 4K and 10-bit colors. This is a really solid option. Something I will complain about is the price of accessories for a camera like this. Yes, right now this camera is priced similarly to these mirrorless and DSLR cameras. However, the accessories are not. To buy a cage or to buy a shoulder rig, uh, something like this that is able to support a camera like this costs thousands of dollars. It's really frustrating uh, and it's really hard to find creative ways to hack around these limitations. It can be done, but it's really annoying and something that um, I just don't really like. I really wish I could get a dedicated cage for this camera, but I'm not about to spill out uh, two, three grand for a camera cage. But you know what? I've been really downplaying the quality that comes out of this camera because all I've been saying is that it doesn't shoot 4K, but what it does shoot is a really beautiful and really high and dynamic range HD image. To be completely honest, I would rather take the image coming out of this camera, the HD 8-bit colors coming from this rather than taking uh, the 4K 10-bit colors coming from the Panasonic GH5. There's so much more dynamic range and the colors look fantastic from this camera. Not only that, it shoots incredible slow motion. It shoots 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second, and 480 frames per second in full HD. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Something else that I should mention is that even though it does a lot of these really incredible uh, frame rates and does really great slow motion, it only does it for a short burst. Then you have to wait for that buffer to record your videos. And that can be something that's really annoying. And I'm often hitting record and waiting for that buffer. And then I'm seeing action happening in front of me and I miss out on it because I can't record until that video has completely recorded. Now you do have the choice to cancel the video while it's recording and then you can continue to record something else. So if you recorded something that was absolute garbage, if you recorded something that was junk, you don't have to wait a long time before you can start recording again. You can just click cancel. And even if you do click cancel, everything that you recorded before you click cancel is still written to the card so you're not losing all the information. And compared to the Fujifilm X-T2, which also shoots 120 frames per second, this just smokes that image with the dynamic range and the fact that there's no aliasing or more or, or anything like that there's no trippy lines there's no distortion in the image and i'm just talking about the image that comes out of this camera internally if you record externally the image is just way better we're talking 4k 120 frames per second in 12-bit raw sony you released this in 2012 how? And yeah, I'm gonna stop recording this video before I go pass out. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, 
ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications and share this video if you know anyone that owns a Sony FS700 or would like to buy one if they're in the market for a camera like this, you should go ahead and share this video with them. And by the way, I'm still looking for an assistant to help me out with making some of these videos while I'm dealing with this handicap. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go ahead and watch last week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.